path to the elements to vault. Be useful.
A travesty! I see Stories, it, stories! Oh, stand up! Right here. You're slouching! Next. Nasty surprise. Caution is warranted here. over there. Oh, <laughs> 
doing a little shopping. We did facts. Not of laying. For decades, all we needed to build a city. I may have overdone it. That's my superb record. My entire life. Your look serves you well, though. I'm ten years behind. Don't want the youth to think I'm not alive. What do I think of what Gortash is still watch? Well, I'm sure she I am so glad you are. Better than ever. Well, she nodded at me very suggestively on my hand. A suggestive nod? I don't need it. You've been single too long. What are they? Annals of Carsus. The preamble to a civilization's downfall, committed to parchment by the very hand that wrought its destruction. The truth of the crown, I hope. All that stands between us and enlightenment is the turn of a page. This isn't what I expected. This is much more. The crown of Carsus. And this, this is no mere journal. It contains Carsus's original plans for the crown's construction. His designs for godhood. Not exactly. It was what he did with it that sealed his fate, and, for a time, that of magic itself. The crown was merely the means. The book states that the crown and netherstones were originally one construct, seemingly sundered at the moment of Carsus's downfall. If we can collect the crown setting and the three netherstones, and, with the correct invocation of certain spells and gestures detailed in these notes, I think I could reforge it. Do not mistake the crown itself for the actions of its wearer, or rather, those controlling its wearer at present. If we could restore its former glory, it would no longer be a mere leash and collar used to subjugate friend or foe. It would be something greater. Something divine. Just think of it. The power of the gods in mortal hands at last. I promise you. The gods will never grant us such a blessing, no matter how much we worship and adore them. I don't know. Ao does not look kindly on gods meddling in mortal affairs. She may have no choice but to stand by and let events unfold. Even with the fate of the world at stake, she had little more to offer me than the means of blowing myself up at a more convenient time. She's done nothing to help us. Mistra wanted the brain obliterated because of this crown. She fears a world in which such power is beyond her control, ready to be claimed by Carsus's successor. Neither of us can know what truly may be if we don't at least try. Potential is nothing in itself. Just a fleeting dream unless we drag it into the waking world. Please, at least think on it. Powerful as he was, Carsus lacked some advantages I can lay claim to. I know Mistra intimately, and I carry a fragment of the weave itself within my body. Cast has achieved many things. Hmm. But he never managed that. Long road lies ahead before the crown comes into our possession. 
All I ask for now is that you do not dismiss this possibility out of hand. Please, at least think on it. I see. I suppose I am asking you to take a leap of faith. Even the most loyal of companions might struggle to land gracefully. It's been so long feeling... inferior. Shut out from my destiny over such a simple act of youthful enthusiasm. Perhaps I got carried away with the thought this crown could give me back what Mistra took. Cure me, even. many wizards who'd care to be mentioned in the same breath as him or his folly. Thank you for letting me read this. At least we can face our enemy armed with the knowledge of its true nature and of the stakes, should we fail to defeat it. Interviews, politics, gossip. All of it gets in that bloody boulder's mount rag. Except what the people actually want in a broadsheet. Puzzles! I don't get it. What's got Dame Aelin so down? I, for one, am delighted Laroa can got what was coming to him. Don't mistake justice for something worse. Aelin has every right to be angry, furious even. I'm glad to see her letting it out. She deserves that much. <laughs> She'll cheer up. Probably just tired, like she said. All's well, I hope, aside from the obvious. Dame Aelin has little to feel sorry about. The Roacan would have inflicted a far worse fate on her, given the chance. Pleasure to share a moment with you, if not in the way I once envisioned. What do you need of me? I question the wisdom of that decision, but so be it. I'll be here in the meantime, idling away the hours. I expected Nightsong to be overjoyed after killing her fair haired fool. Instead, she just seemed tired. <laughs> Hardly! It's going to be the greatest moment of my life. The blood, the screaming. <sighs> just thinking about it makes me smile. Private word would be nice. Go ahead. I'm listening. With salutations.
No one back home will ever believe this. Go ahead. I'm lit. I question the wisdom of that. Dis I'll be here. Don't waste a step. Leave Aelin to her sorrow. Likely the wizard only reminds her of all the other fools past and present who have sought to use her. Very well. Aelin left to face that wizard. Uh, Laroacan, was it? Even after all she's been through, she thinks herself unstoppable, invincible. It all feels like recklessness to me. He can harm her, just as Ketherick did. She'll survive it, but she can suffer like any of us, and for longer. I wanted to help her, but she said she fights better when she knows I'm safe. I understand, I suppose. I feel the same about her. I'll rest a little easier if you do. Moon Maiden, hear me. Boulder's Gate at last. We should find Charesse's caress. Voss will be waiting. Well met. That's the spirit. No time to talk, I'm afraid. Expecting someone. What's on your mind? Darling? Oh, come on. You don't mean that. Oh, fine. Go ahead. I'm listening. With... Ah, excellent choice. I venture forth. Let's chat. Gale of Waterdeep, as I live and breathe. <laughs> as do you, I'm glad to see. I hear you've been browsing in the most esteemed of Emporium's sorcerous sundries. <laughs> uh, indulge my curiosity. What wonders did you discover there? The truth, Elminster. How Carsus's crown could yet be reforged or destroyed, as the case may be. Perhaps now you understand what is at stake here, my boy. 
Though what Mistra asked of you was extreme, it was not without merit, nor demanded lightly. She bids you come to her holy shrine in the Stormshore Tabernacle. There, she will grant you an audience at last. If it was up to her, I'd be a pile of ash along with the rest of the Shadow Cursed Lands by now. Can't imagine what she has to say to me. Sorry, perhaps? She does not make such a gesture lightly. The hourglass measuring our time for such alternatives has but a few grains remaining. If you will not hear it from me, hear it from your goddess. Uh, what truths she has to offer are for your ears alone. Gale of Waterdeep. <laughs> Godspeed. Still breathing, despite everything. What's on your mind? I've often asked myself the same question, and never really found a satisfactory answer. You clearly see something in me that I can't. The wisdom and intelligence required to overcome almost insurmountable odds, perhaps? Or the stupidity required to attempt it. I take it as a compliment either way. You don't get to be 13 centuries old without becoming a sound judge of character. And cheese, apparently. I question the wisdom of that decision, but, sir, I'll be here in... I need to find a way forward. Always at your side. Overhearing what Elminster said to Gale. Not every day a god asks for a chat. Hey, maybe I'm invited too. I can be the muscle. Aces. I figured it out. Exactly what I want to do with you. I want to go on a date. A 
first date. No weapons, no monsters, no mysterious voices. Just you and me and dinner. Please say yes. Yes! Oh, amazing. Put on your least bloody tunic and meet me back here. Oh, I'm so excited! Give me a beat to run ahead. I want to make sure everything's absolutely perfect. See you there. Hi. Hi. You made it. You look nice. Thank you. Hmm. Baldurian seafood stew. No, thank you. What do you think you'll have? Just what I had in mind. Huh? Two of the Rothe ribs, please. And two glasses of... And two glasses of wine. <laughs> so, you're an adventurer, right? How's that going? Kill the monsters, save the townsfolk, sweep the local hell beast off her feet. God, we're terrible at this. This was supposed to be a first date, but it's all I can do to keep my hands to myself. Hmm. Ask me a question, maybe. A getting to know you type question. Oh, that's easy. <laughs> During year two of my fabulous adventure in celibacy in Avernus, I once got so, um, pent up, I burnt down my field tent. Blamed it on an imp and never told a soul the truth. Beat that. We'll have to make some new secrets between us, then. Oh, hey! Here comes our food. Uh, hey, uh, Hank. I think we ordered the... It's a bleeder. Worst guy I ever met. Anyway, how about a toast? Oh, shit! May we live every day like it's our last. Because you never know when your last will come. the company. Whatever do you mean? We're just two normal people living normal lives very, very normally. I know I can't stay forever here with you. In fact, I feel like, like I don't have long left at all. We've been through so much. And the worst is yet to come. I have every reason to feel terrified, hopeless, not giving up. But to be here with you 
in the city I love, in this world that I love so much. It's all I could really ask for. You hear me? You're all I could ever ask for. I love you. And I know that whatever else this city will throw at us, we can handle it. Come on, there's something I want to show you upstairs. No, after you. Ally mine, we are reunited once more. I was just regaling sweet Isabel with tales of our prowess. Very impressive. Thank you for helping, Aelin. That wizard sounded absolutely dastardly. I always do, with darling Isabel by my side. Enjoy the spoils of your victory. Spin memories of Laroican's death in your mind like silk floss. My darling, we must inform our friend of our news. Indeed. I've scouted a Salunite enclave outside the city. They faced the Absolute's armies and come out battered and bruised. Aelin and I will go to them, provide what help we can. But fear not. When the time comes for you to face the foe of foes, Isabel and I will stand by your side. We wouldn't miss it. Not for anything. Go well, friend. We will see you soon. And with our great powers combined, this city will be saved. So all it took to get Mistress' attention was to learn how to reforge an artifact that once destroyed her. It's obvious when you stop to think about it. Well, I doubt it's an apology for asking me to die on her behalf. Whatever it is, if it's important enough to send Elminster, we can be damn sure she's serious. This is a conversation that's long overdue on both sides. I owe it to her to hear her out. Come what may afterwards. Hmm. Very well. Oh, my God. 
I'm starting to remember that Worms Crossing has a bit of a reputation, doesn't it? Tad mercenaries, Tad sorted. Anything and anyone for a price. Ah, but a little harm. Shouldn't we all be allowed to stoke a few fires from time to time? You sound like you're speaking from experience, Will. Perhaps you'll have to give me a tour, refresh my memory. <laughs> I'm afraid you'd find my own stories rather tight-laced, Shadowheart. I was never one to sow my wild oats. I don't mind. Father, give me strength. I need to find a way forward. Buy a painting. Go on, treat yourself. Come again. Gortash is expecting you. Please make your way to the audience chamber. Lord Gortash is expecting you. Please make your way to the audience chamber. is a charlatan, like every last patriarch of this wretched city. Hmm. Hush. Patriarchs are upstairs. Lord Janeth could call for me at any moment. You're free to explore, within reason. Kinspeople, Baldurians, and dearest Duke Ravengard, thank you for joining me on this exceptional day. It's him. Gortash. <sighs> this is it. I can practically taste his blood from here. My father's here, Karlak. Cool your fires. He must not come to harm. I'll wait for now. But that prick Gortash is going to pay. A moment, please, my friends. An old acquaintance has come to pay her respects. Please, Karlak, come and say a proper hello. My respects? You're lucky I've agreed not to shove my boot up your... Ah, how I've missed your colorful turns of phrase. We must catch up, just as soon as I've had words with your little friend. As for you, I understand congratulations are in order. Thorm's defeat hasn't gone unnoticed. You're known for who you are and for that netherstone that you carry. 
The quakes are a clear warning. If nobody steps in soon, it'll free itself from the authority of the crown. I expect it'll start with turning the sword coasts infected. You among them. A prism of yours won't last indefinitely. Next, the grand design. The Mind Flayer Empire reborn. If we're lucky, we'll become slaves. If we're unlucky, well, not the most thrilling of prospects, but it's a fate that can be avoided if you and I come to an understanding. Together, we can still restore authority over the brain. Of course. Gortash always did have an eye for opportunity. The likes of you stand to benefit from the likes of me. There's an old wisdom. A brittle alliance can never be mended. It can only break. With Ketherick gone, Orin proved treacherous. Baal's chosen wants the Neverstones for herself. She only cares for blood. And your blood and mine are of particular interest to her. Orin changes shape faster than you and I change clothes. You know, she's tricked you before. She's targeted me as well. I'm well protected, but she's extremely good at what she does. If Orin obtains all three Netherstones, she'll plunge the coast into chaos and paint the city in blood. I can't let that happen. I want to lead this city to glory, not scorch its earth. I'd like to propose a pact, a divine oath sworn upon spirit and flesh. I do no harm to you, nor you to me. Furthermore, you'll have nothing to fear from my steel watch while our pact stands. Thorm's stone is yours to keep. When you slay Orin and take her stone, you bring it here, so the three are united once again. Together we rule Faerun as kings. No, more than kings. Gods. We rule as the absolute. And my father? Your father will do whatever you command him to, like any other subject in our kingdom. What do you say? Shall we be allies? I can detect no deceit. This alliance could serve us well. And if it does not, well. We need not honor it. Hmm. Let's be allies, said the Viper to the Frog. Gortash's eyes blink in a consistent rhythm. He stands calmly, confidently. He fully intends to share his kingdom with you. Perhaps a demonstration of why you need my help will motivate you to make the right decision. Your camp is compromised. One among you is an imposter. A faceless. Who, I can't say. I'd suggest a thorough investigation. You'll find I speak the truth. A doppelganger in our camp. That's a the faceless in your camp is like a knife at your throat. Remove it quickly. Or any alliance between us would be exceedingly short-lived. Even horror has a home. Find her nest and slay her there. For all its charms, Baldur's Gate has long had a cancer at its heart. A hidden temple devoted to Baal. That's where Orin became what she is. 
where she worshipped and schemed. And now, it's where she hides from my watchers, when she's not spilling blood in the streets. You're resourceful. I trust you'll sniff it out. If the trail goes cold, follow the bodies. First, Orin the Red, bloody dagger of Baal, causes panic in the streets through killings in the Absolute's name. Next, the threat of the Absolute's monstrous armies formed by Merkel's general, Catherick Thor. In such circumstances, people crave strong leaders. Leaders that bring law, order, and protection. Leaders like me, Bane's unyielding hand, author of justice. You are soon to witness the people of Baldur's Gate granting me complete power over them, all out of fear of the absolute. Next, I, we, will declare curfew and begin infecting the masses. Our subjects will hear the voice of their absolute god. The faithful will do anything in the name of their god. Our tyranny, and we are saviors, defenders of the Sword Coast, our loyal subjects will love us, not hate us. What comes next will be entirely their fault. Powerful connections. Let's leave it at that. Soon, first, come and be witness as I make history. The first Archduke of Baldur's Gate. You will follow me, and you will show due respect. Distinguished Dukes, Patriarchs, dearest Raven Guard, I will heed your call. A new chapter begins. Enver Gortash, swearest thou by Baldurin's blade to defend the citizens of Baldur's Gate from enemies within and without? I swear. Swearest thou true faith and fealty to the same, by word, deed, and decree, so that none may suffer? I swear. Gather guests. Grant ye consent. Enver Gortash, the council appoints you Archduke of Baldur's Gate. My friends, and you, honored guest. You'll find me in my office above when you return. Do not come empty-handed. So there you have it. Lord Enver Gortash in all his glory. What did you make of him? Yeah. Fucker always had expensive taste. I don't know how anyone in this hall could fall for this charade. Isn't it obvious what a chancer he is? And they expect these big metal monsters to tuck them in at night while the absolute knocks on the gates. If only they knew the truth. The Dead Three orchestrated all of this. And it's working. I wish this city, the people running it, were smarter than me. Gortash isn't their salvation. He's the monster at the gate. And if the Steel Watch can't protect us, what then? Unthinkable. To see my own father named Gortash, the sole ruler of Baldur's Gate. Please. We need to speak with him. Maybe, maybe he can see reason. Gorta 
An imposter in our ranks. If this is true, it could be anyone. You, me. Well, not me. I know who I am. Perhaps we shouldn't take Gortash's word for granted. But if he speaks the truth, we need to be careful. Orin could have eyes and ears on us right now. Archduke Gortash. Now there's a man who knows good business. Finally, a leader with some charisma. Ravenguard was quite the dullard. They will be in Archduke Gortash, man of the people. The right people. An Archduke! Finally someone who can stand up to those wretched absolutists. What glory our city, and what glory its future. Ravenguard has not once failed this city. If he trusts Gortash, then so do I. The Steel Watch has made an impenetrable fortress out of the Sword Coast Crown Jewel. I can't think of a better endorsement for Gortash than that. Truest of souls, bathed in her light. There is a fleeting connection. Your parasite communes with his, then falls quiet. Father, my dearest boy, the Hells have touched you. But you've come to me just as Gortash said you would. A true soul, no less. Father and son, unstoppable generals. You and your allies will usher in a new dawn. What is a hero? if not an actor for the greater good. Faerun suffers in darkness. Tyr has abandoned us. Helm's eye has strayed. But Baldur's Gate will soon burn bright, a beacon to light the heavens. Gortash and I will ignite the final spark, and that, true soul, is the greatest of goods. No, this isn't him. This is the tadpole talking. For a brief moment, uncertainty clouds his mind, then dissipates. The astral prism vibrates in concord. What nonsense is this? I... The prism quivers once more. Raven Guard falters. As I said, Baldur's Gate will ascend to Rill's first and only grand city. Let her light shine. And if the Steel Watch can't... Incredible. To hear my father's voice speak those words. Like a stranger wrapped in his flesh. I won't let the Absolute keep him. This is my pledge. And the Fist must unite under one...
see what this does. All livestock is now property of the Ducal Council for the duration of the ongoing emergency. What's up for discussion? What did I tell you? A momentous occasion. I'm sure you agree. I've had enough, Mizora. What do you want? Your attention, little pup. Nothing more. And you'll be glad to give it. You see, Gortash has had your father relocated. I'm just an impartial observer. This is Gortash's game. A murderous one, the way I hear it. Shit. Your dad's good as dead, pup. And to think there's no way to save him. Or is there? You know something. I know enough. I'll be in your camp if you want to work something out. Of course she'd stick her infernal nose where it doesn't belong. Of course she's dreamt up some risible scheme. By all the hounds of the hells, what is she planning? Certainly not. But she's as inevitable as Toril's path around the sun. We'll have answers soon enough. Mazora's gone to camp. We should speak with her. Until then, may my father keep safe, whatever coop he's been flown to. Swift as my feet can carry me. Hey, wanna play pretend? You and me. Let's imagine I get to live 50 more years. We have a whole life ahead of us. What do we do? on the stairs. Karlak with a peach. Karlak with her hair in plaits. I can picture it all now. But I've got a creative streak of my own, you know. And making you laugh is my greatest accomplishment every time I manage it. <sighs> Damn it. I wish I had a longer road ahead of me. I want to walk it with you. I'm not really tough enough to face any of this, you know. I'm scared shitless. But there's a courage in me I never knew I had. I've always thought I was fearless. 
Never scared of a fight of the future. But dying has taught me so much. There's no courage in fearlessness. There's courage in being fucking terrified, but still going forward. Still being grateful. Still trying. We're going to save this city. Together. It's going to be the last thing I do. That's why I know we're going to win. Let's get busy with it. I've got the rest of my life ahead of me and a lot to do before I go. Miss Zora, I'd take anything she says with a grain of salt. But with her claws as deep in our business as they are, I guess we can't ignore her completely. I had no wish to lose Will, but my, it would have been nice to flush her into the colony's flesh pit. I don't relish the idea of Mizora visiting our camp, let alone offering us anything resembling a <laughs> deal. When the devils start approaching you, you know you're in deep. Let's talk. The devil will come for her due. Mizora is no different. Whatever it is she comes to offer, whatever choice Will makes, someone will suffer. Count on it. Vlakith's left hand and her right. Commander of all dragons, chosen of the Queen Regent. Not since Vlakith won has a Bart of Vlakith been anointed. <sighs> Another empty promise. Only a naive fool would believe otherwise. The kind of fool I was not so long ago. Mizora schemes with Will's very freedom. He deserves to know what she is up to. Whatever business Will has with Mazora, it will cost him dearly. Or worse still, it will cost us. I hope we can afford it. I regret many things in my life. Choosing to be here, intact and unexploded, is not one of them. For now, to have a few more days in your company, no, I wouldn't change a thing. Here we go. No tomb sit in Beator. No tomb sit in Beator. Holy hells. I come to bargain. The hells demand witness. Enough! 
Mizora. Where is my father? How do I save him? How else? We bargain. Sisters. Infernos contractos te vocamos. Infernos contractos te vocamos. Infernos contractos te vocamos. Your contract, Will. Signed in blood, forged in fire, bound in bone, but not unbreakable. No contract is ended without sacrifice. A cost must be paid. Will Ravenguard, a choice is before you. Option one, I show you the way to your father. I guarantee him no harm except that from you and your allies. And you pledge your soul to me and the Archdevil Zariel in a pact eternal. Option two, I break your pact and you are freed from your duty. Your father dies by his enemy's hand and Baldur's Gate loses its greatest champion. Name your sacrifice. Bloody Zariel. I won't let her take Will. Silence, Karlak. Mizora, you asshole. Choose. Damned wretch! Father... Do it. Break the pact. Fiat Ita. Fiat Ita. Anima ad beatur. about your father. You made your choice. You knew the terms. You know what? I think I'll stick around. Not for the greater good, you understand. Just for the entertainment. I spent seven years choked by Mazura's leash. And I spent seven years hoping to break free. I never knew freedom could taste so bittersweet. I have to believe that. I'm not the Hell's puppet in life, nor its warrior in death. The blade will be guiding his own hand, but freedom will be paid in my father's blood. Tomorrow, I celebrate my gain. Today, I mourn my loss. A moment passes. In the stillness, you find a moat of tranquility. The Raven God name now lives solely with me. I will make it count for something. I signed his life away before the Hell's Witnesses. It would be easier to drink the sticks down to the last drop than to alter his fate. I'd be a fool to wish otherwise. We obtain the final two nether stones and take back our minds and the city from the brain. 